teaching kindergarten is like herding cats. Now, undoubtedly, you have heard that analogy before, but just imagine those cats that you're herding, they have paintbrushes for tails and you're actively painting with them and trying to create a masterpiece. That's what it's like to teach kindergarten art. If we haven't met before, my name is Katie Jarvis and I'm a K through six elementary art teacher and I teach at a Title I school just outside of Washington, DC. I'm creating this video because of you. Over on my community tab, I asked my viewers what videos they would like to see on managing the mess and overwhelmingly I heard tips on teaching kindergartners art because it's hard. Now I'm gonna create a whole series on this because this is a huge topic. So this is just one video within that series. Um, the one that's already up that you may wanna check out is my top 10 favorite kindergarten art supplies. I'll be sure to link that in the description down below. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do before the kindergartners come. This is a little bit mindset, a little bit preparation. We're also gonna talk about how students would come and enter into your art room, or if you're on a cart, what does that look like when you come into their space? We're also gonna talk about how to run that kindergarten art lesson and how does that look different than at other grade levels. Now, this is gonna have a part two, so make sure that you subscribe down below so you do not miss that. In part two, that's when we're gonna talk about kindergarten work time, kindergartners cleaning up, and kindergartners lining up. Without a doubt, kindergarten takes the most time and the most preparation. Now, I am very lucky. My kindergarten classes are 45 minutes, and I'm blessed that an instructional assistant that typically works with that class attends art. So I've got that support, but I slowly want to work that person out of a job over time. So an example of how we would support students in the beginning versus as the year moves on. At the very beginning of the year, when we are um, creating artwork, we have students wear art shirts on top of their clothing. At the beginning of the year, we would up just the boys or just the girls, line up on a number line in front of the art shirt bin. One of the adults in the room would arrange the art shirt and put it over top of the student's head. So all they needed to do was pop their little arms out and go ahead and sit down on their spot. All the materials and the paintbrushes and things would already be at their table. As time goes by, like we're getting to second quarter, when we're doing painting, we might just come back and hand the student an art shirt when they get to the front of the line and have them go to their seats and put the art shirt on themselves. By the time we get to the third quarter, we're having the students line up in the same way, but we are talking them through, now you take an art shirt, okay, then the next person, and you know, teaching when is it your turn, that you take one and then you're stepping and moving out of the way to put that art shirt on. So that's how that progression would look. Um, same thing with supplies. At the beginning, I'm placing all the supplies on the tables for my students, but I might have like one certain thing that they go and get. So there might be glue and there might be paper already at the tables, but I would do a lesson where I teach them how to go and get the scissors and bring the scissors to their table. And then at the end, they would be in charge of putting those scissors back. So very slowly over time, teaching how to get out certain materials and also how to clean up and put away things. But that's not something that you can just throw at your kindergartners and have them be successful from the very beginning. It's something you really need to scaffold and set that up so that they have that goal achieved by the end of the school year. And that just takes time. The kindergartners really need that repetition. My biggest advice with kindergartners is make sure you have a plan, make sure you have a backup plan, and then make sure you have extras of whatever you're doing because you really do not know what is going to happen with kindergartners. They are a total wild card. I once had a kindergartner paint their belly button and then keep it hidden all day. And then right as they were getting on the bus, pull up their shirt and reveal it to everyone. I had a student, as I was giving a lesson, find a little stray bead that was on the floor, lodge it into their ear, and then have to have that removed in the emergency room. Just this week, I saw kids licking paintbrushes. And a lot of times when something like that happens, 
you don't know if they're just messing with you or they don't have enough experiences. It's really hard to tell, I think. I'm actually more afraid of teaching kindergartners than I am sixth graders because there's a wide variety of experiences that those students have in kindergarten and you really just don't know where they're at. And they're so, so cute that they can totally manipulate you and you need to be aware of that. <laughs> I greet my kindergartners at the door and invite them into the art room. Together, we walk down this number line, which is where they line up when they come into art. And we walk all the way around the room. This gives them a little second to get their wiggles out. Um, they can kind of take a look at what objectives are hanging up there, what looks different about the room, what materials are out. And we don't have the students talk during this time. It's just a time for them to look. And this actually came about because I think they were blocking the hallway because they were coming in so slowly. So it's just kind of a quick way to get them out of the hall, out of the traffic, into the art room. And then they're walking all the way around my room to the carpet area. So I am leading that line and I get to the carpet first. I have that line leader sit down on green. I invite the next person to sit down on orange. And I keep pointing out what spot that they sit in, having them fill in that first line first then the second line, then the third line. And this is the um, same routine that I use for all my grade levels, that they sit down in their line order and that they move all the way across. So that's a routine that will show up and they will get to build on that in the next school year. Once the students are seated on the carpet, I give them a signal that I'm ready to start the lesson. And I highly recommend that you have something like this as well, because this sort of means to them action. This is when things are going to begin. And I would use the same signal with all of your students, because once your kindergartners noted this and they've got this down, this is going to be such a strong signal that you can use from year to year. So for me, I do one, two, one, two, three, don't hit clap. And then I say to the students, that clap means you turn your voice off and put your eyes on me. It's nice to have a slide up to welcome and greet your students. And this is also setting expectations. Once I've given them that circle, they need to sit down and they need to remain quiet. Together, we will do that opening clap. We do a greeting. I do the Cassie Stevens greeting where I say, hello, my most amazing artist. They say, hello, my most amazing art teacher. And then we do this 20 second video that I found on YouTube. It's from Harry Wong Kindergarten. I will link it down below. It's called the Crisscross Applesauce Song. And it just kind of reinforces how they need to be sitting and how they need to be looking and listening. Um, I give them the option of how they want to sit. This was a free printable that I got. It less my chat was still available so i will also link that for you down below um this is a printable that i created from teachers pay teachers so i took different images and put them together and these are my expectations of how students enter the room now on day one of kindergarten art and actually for the first few kindergarten classes i met the kindergartners in the hallway and i had this printed out on a big piece of paper and i was holding it and I was leading my lesson in the hallway about how to come into art. If your entrance routine is not going well, you could stop and do this at any point during the school year. But I wouldn't teach this after they've already run like crazy animals into my room. I would teach this out in the hallway. So each and every week, I quickly just kind of review this. Did we stay in our line? Yes, we did when we walked down the numbers. Oh, I didn't hear you guys. You all, look, you're all sitting down. That's looking good. Everyone's eyes are forward. Everyone's ears are ready to listen. And then I put up a point. I use a happy and sad board for my behavior management. If you're looking for more information on this, I have a full video about this, but my kindergartners really love it. So they get a point and then I point to them and they say, oh yeah. So they get a little celebration when they get that 
point. Then we will go through the art room rules. This is something that I do with my classes each and every week. Each of the rules has hand motions and we mix it up and make it fun by doing them in different styles. This week we've been doing like a bzzz, bumblebee style. So we have to say, raise your wing instead of raise your hand. Next week, we're going to be doing it in the style of a turkey as we recite those rules. I have a full list of a bunch of different styles that I do. So if you are interested in that, check out Teachers Pay Teachers over on Managing the Mess. That is a freebie and it can help you get started if you want to also have your students recite the rules. So we'll go through this. Again, the students are doing hand motions. They're saying them and I am saying it with them. That is how they can earn their second point. If people are actively participating and helping with that. My full rules and about how to use those styles in your classroom are also in separate videos. So if you're interested in that, I will definitely link that down below, but those are some good resources that you're going to want to check out. In my classes, I use a red zone and a yellow zone sign. Hey, guess what? Also a freebie over on my Teachers Pay Teachers. So these are just laminated signs. As we're doing the rules and we are um, doing the grading, we're in a yellow zone, which means they're allowed to talk quietly. Once we're about ready, to your good listening, I'm getting ready to change the sign to the red zone. Just like if mom and dad are driving in the car, red means stop. And this is a really good visual for the kindergartners. Now I will go through the Mona Lisa listening as I'm getting ready to put this up. I say Mona, they say Lisa, Mona, Lisa, Mona, Lisa. Each and every time I'm doing all these things exactly the same. I say, make sure that you're hands are still, your eyes are forward, and your lips are zipped. And then I would put up that red zone sign, and then I would begin my lesson. So that opening routine is very familiar and very comforting to my kindergarten students. It really settles them down and settles them in. In that red zone, they do have to raise their hand to ask a question. But every time I'm doing that opening routine, I do it exactly the same way. It's scripted that I'm saying exactly the same thing. And the routine is, this is not when we're raising our hands and talking and sharing. They know that that's a time to listen and that we're going to go through that complete routine. And then we're going to be finding out what we're going to be making. If you're having trouble with your kindergarten artist shouting out, I have a video called Managing the Talking that you're definitely going to want to see. I share lots of helpful advice there. As I'm going into my lesson, I'm first stating the objective. You wouldn't just take somebody on a car ride and not tell them where where you were going. So explain to them that today we're going to create clay houses. I actually do two clay lessons with my students. They do pinch pots, but they also do these clay houses. So I have another slide deck where we talk about what clay is. So they have already seen that in a previous lesson. I then break down the vocabulary. So I'm not just using these words that they don't have any idea what they mean. So I explain what a slab is. I explain what scoring is and we use forks to do that. I explain what slip is and I have a little video in there where I'm using the water as the glue and I'm attaching those clay pieces together. Um, I explain what texture is. Now that is actually a connection because we did a corduroy bear lesson where we added in our own um, textures with the paint using scraffito. So we would talk about that and make that connection. Then I have a quick video that I created showing my hands quickly in a time lapse making the house, doing each and every step that the kindergartners would be doing. Um, this is like a commercial to get them excited. It's two minutes or less really just fast and furious, gets them like, oh my goodness, super excited, I want to make this. And then I review the steps. So I have pictures of what each step looks like. Okay, this is what we're doing, then this is what we're doing. As they go back to their seats with their art shirts on and sitting down with their clay, I'm referring back to these steps. I'm saying, everyone, we are going to do this first step. You know, it's okay to do the second step and move on to that and walking them through the process of what needs to happen first, what needs to happen second. The next week, then we would glaze. But this is how I break down my kindergarten opening and my lesson to help those learners be successful. Have a plan for what you're going to do if your kindergartner's attention 
starts to fall as you're doing your lesson because it can happen. They're a tough audience. One of my favorites, because it's really quick, is also something physical that they need to do. Like, can I get a clap, clap, elbow tap? And they would say, clap, clap, elbow tap. And then I would say, show me your Mona. And then I can just jump right back into my lesson. Another one that I discovered this year, because I had to change something over on my slides, is I said, I'm going to cover my eyes and I'm not going to peek. And in five seconds, I want to see everyone showing me their Mona Lisa. And I was like over here. And then I'm like, three, I'm not going to peek, two, one. And everyone was sitting there quietly. Like, why haven't I been doing this for the last 22 years? So sometimes it's something like really silly and fun. They love seeing your like exaggerated reaction. That works. I would also find a couple of like kindergarten, preschool songs and just try them out someday if you're having a tough crowd. One that I like to use, open and shut them, open and shut them. Give them a little clap, 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 clap. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Do I wanna sing that every week? No. Do I pull it out when I'm having a tough day and does it work? Yes. So look up those things, have a couple of tricks up your sleeve so that those kindergartners don't eat you alive. In my lesson, you saw that I was teaching my students how to use the materials. Otherwise, we're going to start making things and I'm going to start getting frustrated. So demonstrate, I want you to hold your paintbrush just like how you hold a pencil. We're not holding our paintbrushes like this because we can't control it. Also, problem solve with your students so that they are not coming to you with all of your problems. Let them know if you get a little bit of paint on your hands or you drop some paint on the floor, stop what you're doing and walk over and get a baby wipe. Clean it up and throw that baby wipe in the trash. Teach your students how they can be independent within your lesson and how to successfully use those materials will set you up for a wonderful kindergarten lesson. I can't wait to see you in my next video.